is the last and final prophet of Allah. He was a mercy unto the universe. Peace and blessings be on Al Mustafa. So he Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, peace and the mercy of Allah be upon you and welcome to Hadith Principles. Uh, this is a program where we examine the methodology and science of studying the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. The Hadith are one of the major sources of our Islamic teaching, of our beliefs and practices. And so it's essential for all Muslims to be aware of the Hadith and it is very strengthening for our faith that we can understand uh, the great efforts and sacrifices made to preserve the Hadith of the Prophet from any additions or subtractions or alterations and to pass it on to us. In the history of Islam, our great muhaddithun or great scholars of the Hadith became, uh, I mean, they were so, so um, accurate and... and um, <laughs> careful in their study of the hadith that the word critic, the naqad of the hadith became the highest um, word of praise for the highest level of scholarship in Islam. And that was at a time when if you were, for example, a member of the church and you criticized some tradition of the church, you would be burnt at the stake or killed or imprisoned. And that was true all over the world, even up until very recent times. Yet in Islam... The idea of applying critical scholarly methods uh, in a respectful way to the study of our text is a very important and respected area of our religion. We've been talking in some of the last episodes about the principles used to determine whether a hadith is authentic or is less than authentic, whether it is usable as a source for our study of Islam or not. And we use a lot of principles that we may need to review a few of them. We, we talk about a hadith that it has an isnad, a chain of narrators. And if you look, it starts at the bottom, the person who has compiled the hadith in, a, in his publication or book, and then going from his teacher to the next level to his teacher, eventually to the tabi'i, the, the follower, the second generation, then the Sahabi, the uh, companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and finally the Prophet himself, alayhi salatu wasalam. And so the hadith that has all of that continuously is called mutasar. And if it has it, for example, all the way to any level, like to the tabi, then you could call it mutasar or continuous except to the tabi, or mutasar <laughs> continuous except to the Sahabi. If it goes all the way continuous to the Prophet, peace be upon him, that is called the marfu'ah that it is raised up to the highest level. And if that hadith has gone only to the Sahabi, we call that the mawquf. And the mawquf stops at the level of the companion of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. But very often, those hadith, even though they are only in the words of the Sahabi, he's actually telling us something that he is uh, heard or learned from the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. And so it may have... Uh, Hukum al marfu' that is on the same level as and treated as a marfu' hadith. And a hadith that only goes to the tabi is called the mursal hadith or it's called the maqtu' hadith which stops at that level. If there are any breaks anywhere else in that link, we call that al munqata hadith and that hadith is not usable for us as a source in Islamic study. Uh, and so the hadith that has the complete isnad is the Musnad Hadith, and uh, the Hadith that it has any cut in its Isnad is the Munqata Hadith. We also talked about some very subtle flaws that may occur in Hadiths that are apparently correct, the Tadlis, where a narrator who is normally considered to be a reliable narrator uh, hides the actual teacher of a Hadith, or uh, claims that he heard a hadith from one of his, or implies indirectly that he heard a hadith from his teacher when in fact he did not hear that hadith, or he hides uh, 
in a subtle way the true identity of the teacher of that hadith. We also talked about the iftarab, uh, the muttarab, the hadith in which uh, there is confusion in the isnad and in the wording. There are different versions that are contradictory to one another and we cannot determine which one is more authentic and therefore we can't accept that. Uh, the idraj in which uh, words of a Sahabi or one of the narrators are included in the actual text of the Hadith and uh, so that we would be confused and think those were words of the Prophet Muhammad. All of those are reasons for those things to be rejected and those words cannot be used as a proof or evidence of the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well as the Shad Hadith which is contradictory to a more authentic source or a more numerous uh, reliable uh, narrators of hadith than that particular hadith or the munkar hadith in which those changes have been introduced uh, which are contradictory to more authentic sources as opposed to ziyadat al thiqa when uh, one narrator or more narrators narrate a hadith that has extra information that is from the Prophet uh, that is not found in some other versions and that is okay as long as they're trustworthy narrators, some narrate the hadith in more full form, while others in a maybe shorter or briefer form. All of that, the reason we need to understand that is because when we read the books about the hadith principles, those things will be discussed. And then we need to look at them and see the examples to understand how it works. And if we apply ourselves more, we can become uh, proficient in using these techniques ourselves and practice them, but at least we'll be familiar with how great an effort Islam put into preserving our religion for us by the grace of Allah, that will increase our faith and understanding, inshallah. Um, another kind of very subtle change that is found in hadith that is not easily detected and which is known to very few scholars is the illa of the hadith, the hidden defects which make it the hadith ma'lul. The hadith ma'lul, this is a really an art form in hadith. And it is uh, the expertise of a few uh, certain scholars. Uh, Ibn al-Salah says the ma'lul hadith, the hadith with a hidden defect, is one which appears to be sound in every respect, but after thorough, difficult research, it reveals some factor that shows that it is not authentic. And so it appears that this hadith is going all the way to the Prophet or it appears that it is uh, continuous and in fact it is not. It is maybe the saying of a Sahabi or Tabi or it is, a, it is not correctly attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These kind of defects can only be revealed when a scholar takes all of the isnads of a particular hadith and compares them. Looking at all of the narrators, their teachers, 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 and you trace it back to its origin. And then by comparing the different isnads or chains, you can find where those mistakes occurred intentionally or unintentionally in the narration of the hadith. Uh, for, and a famous example is Al-Hasan al-Basri. Al-Hasan al-Basri was a great scholar in Islam of the second generation of the Tabi'een. He died in the year 110. So he lived in the time of the later time of the Sahaba, of the companions, and he did meet some. And he died at the age of 88. Uh, but there are hadiths narrated from Al-Hasan al-Basri, uh, from Ali ibn Abi Talib, who of course is the fourth of the Khulafa Rashidin, the well, rightly guided or so-called orthodox caliphs or successors of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. But when you look into it, Ibn al-Madini, one of the great scholars of hadith, shows that um, uh, Hassan al-Basri did not meet Ali ibn Abi Talib. There's a slight possibility that as a very young child, he may have met Ali. But he would have been a very young child, of course, too young to narrate hadith from Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yet you find the people in the mystic tradition in Islam, Sufism or Tasawwuf, narrate many hadiths about mysticism, which are supporting their belief uh, from Al-Hasan al-Basri, uh, from Ali ibn Abi Talib. 
And so they appear to be very authentic because Hassan al-Basri is a great scholar as well as Tabi, and he did meet the Sahaba, but he did not meet or narrate hadith from Ali ibn Abi Talib. And so it's a very um, delicate, um, a delicate uh, branch of Islamic studies. Um, I have gone on and haven't introduced the brothers, and I should have introduced them in the beginning of the program. They always are here to support me and help, and we're trying to learn together about this um, subject. And so I wanted to welcome Brother Adil from the United States, and, uh, pardon, Ayman from the United States, and Brother Adil uh, and Brother Hussam from uh, uh, Egypt, from the Republic of Egypt. Uh, welcome, brothers, and I'm sorry okay. for getting oh. to introduce you. But Allah, you know, alone is perfect, and all of us sometimes make mistakes, so forgive me for that. That's right. Um, there are many great scholars who've written on the ilal. The ilal is plural of illa, that is the hidden defects of the hadith. Imam al Tirmidhi, the same one who has the Sunan, one of the six uh, canonical books of hadith, he has uh, two books on the ilal, the big one and the big little one. Ibn Abi, uh, Ibn Abi Hatim, Razi Al Khalal, uh, Darakutni has a very useful book, uh, and many other books, but they are of the highest level. And so a lot of scholars are not as familiar with this branch as other branches. We'll go for a break and we'll be back shortly. Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad is the last and final prophet of Allah. In this program, inshallah, we'll be discussing the major sins in Islam. The way that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taught us. Why the neighbor does not care about their neighbor anymore? Why does the father does not care about the son anymore? Why does the mother does not care about her daughter anymore? There's major sins that we need to be very far away in our lives. So we could get and get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obtain the pleasure of Allah azza wa jalla. As long as we commit those major sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be too pleased from us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish those who commit those major sins. Keep away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbidden and you'll be the closest worshipper to Allah azza wa jalla. It is our duty in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep away from what Allah azza wa jalla had forbidden. As when we commit those sins, especially those major sins, Remember, you are displeasing your Lord and you are bringing upon the curse and the anger of your Lord upon you. Dear viewers, Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax, and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Muhammad is the last and final prophet of Allah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Hadith Principles. Before the break, we're reviewing some of the terminology, the principles used to sift out the Hadith and protect uh, the Hadith of the Prophet from uh, false Hadiths that may be attributed to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, there are some examples found in the different books uh, that will make you understand a little bit about the illa uh, of Hadith. Uh, one is narrated in Sahih Muslim, and so it has a very authentic, apparently very authentic isnad from Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, may Allah uh, bless him, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah created the land on Saturday. He created the mountains on Sunday. He created the trees on Monday. He created the things entailing labor on Tuesday. He created the light or, or fish on Wednesday. He scattered the beasts on the earth in Thursday, and he created Adam after the afternoon of Friday, the last creation at the last hour of the hours of Friday between the afternoon and night. So, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, one of the great uh, ulama scholars of uh, fiqh, uh, as well as hadith, he stated that men who are more knowledgeable than Muslim 
such as Al-Bukhari and Yahya ibn Ma'in have criticized this. And Al-Bukhari said, this saying is not that of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, but that of Kaab al-Ahbar. And the reason is that Kaab al-Ahbar was a Jewish learned rabbi who embraced Islam. And people would ask him about things mentioned in the Qur'an uh, that were related to the history of the tribe of Israel that are mentioned in the Qur'an. And he would tell them stories. And so people asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about these stories. And he said, Hadithu an Bani Israel wala haraj. It's okay, it's alright to narrate the stories of the tribe of Israel. And so we don't say those stories are true or false. If they contradict the Qur'an or the authentic sunnah, then we will reject them. Otherwise, we don't say they are necessarily true or false. But there is no harm in most of those stories. So they add some details not found in the Qur'an. And so often what happened is that people narrated those stories and mistakenly attributed them to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. And some people said, well, because the Prophet said that, he gave us permission to tell those stories, that all those stories then are attributable to the Prophet ﷺ, and they are purposely uh, narrated on the Prophet ﷺ. Others are very delicate things that happen at later times. And Imam uh, at tahawi who is one of the great scholars of hadith from uh, the uh, Hanafi school, he narrates, for example, uh, famous hadith uh, permitting us to eat the meat of the hyena. And the hyena is an animal that has fangs and eats, uh, kills animals and eats carrion, as well as other things. And so the Prophet ﷺ in the authentic hadith said that it's forbidden for us every animal that has the fangs, gunab, and every hunting uh, bird that has the, the talons. And so hunting animals and hunting birds are normally forbidden in the sunnah of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. And so after researching all the versions of this hadith, Imam Tahawi concludes in the end that during the caliphate of Omar ibn al-Khattab, a man on the pilgrimage uh, hunted and killed a hyena. And in the pilgrimage, you're not allowed to hunt animals, and so you have to pay the fidya, you have to pay a penalty for that, uh, as mentioned in the Holy Qur'an. And so he killed the hyena, and it was, this was referred to Omar ibn Khattab, and he ruled that he had to pay the fidya. Because if it had been a dangerous animal like a lion or tiger that would harm people, then uh, you're, not, you're allowed to hunt it. You're allowed to defend yourself against snakes or scorpions or lions or other wild animals that will harm people. But hyenas weren't known to harm people. And so Omar ibn Khattab ruled that you have to pay the fidya on that. And so from that, people concluded that if you, if you are, uh, are not allowed to hunt it, that it must be edible. And so they thought that this was uh, permission to eat the meat of the hyena and Omar wouldn't have ruled that if it was not the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. And so Imam Tahawi and Allahu Alam, he says that this hadith is ma'lul, it is defective, and that the origin of this hadith was from that uh, incident in the time of Omar ibn al-Khattab. And so that is just an example of some of the very subtle ways that the ulama used to study the hadiths, both this, the, the, the metan, the story or text of the hadith itself, as well as the isnad or the chain of narrators, inshallah. Um, you have just said a hadith that was uh, related by Muslim. Yes. And this uh, hadith, it was criticized by uh, Yahya ibn Ma'in, right? Yes. And does, does this mean that Muslim contains unauthentic hadith? Well, once again, uh, the scholars are agreed that the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim are authentic. But, um, Certain few hadith in both of them have been criticized by uh, important scholars. And so in general, we accept those hadith. And so this hadith, when you look at it, the isnad is completely authentic. And it appears to be authentic. But there is the, the uh, example of the hadith of the Prophet that you are allowed to narrate the stories of Bani Israel. Similar stories are found in all the collections of hadith. And so they may be authentic to the Prophet and some of them may not be. And so some of the scholars were highly qualified and experienced to sift those out carefully. Uh, and others neglected to do so. And so Bukhari 
was more knowledgeable about that and Ibn Ma'in were more knowledgeable about that than Imam Muslim was. And Ibn Taymiyyah also was very, uh, very careful about that as was Ibn Kathir. They were very knowledgeable about the stories of previous peoples and were diligent because especially in later eras, the books of Tafsir became filled with those stories uh, that were not authentic. Books of Sira, for example, full of these kind of stories. And so they paid a close attention to those and criticized many of them. And so the fact that something like that would slip by the attention of Imam Muslim is not detracting from him in any way. Nobody could be perfect and absolutely certain in every category. And so that's the blessing that the, Allah Almighty didn't bring for our Muslim community, our Ummah, one or two great scholars, but thousands of them. And so we benefit from them all. And everybody, every, every human being after the Prophet is not, none of us are ma'asum. None of us are protected from error. And so all the different scholars each supplement the others. So Bukhari supplements Muslim and vice versa. And all of them work together. And so inshallah we can be very confident in the whole of those texts. But there may be question about some particular text that doesn't take away from the whole and, and the, the confidence we have in the whole of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Mr. Have a question, please? Yes. What exactly is the 40 hadith by Imam Nawawi? Okay, we see there are many hadith books compiled later on that are compiled from other sources that were already published. So all the hadith published were 40 very important hadith, which are the uh, principles of the hadith or the uh, famous um, uh, Islamic guidance and principles that are found in the Hadith. And so they're very important foundational Hadiths uh, and they're all found in Bukhari, Muslim, the six books, uh, Dara Qutani, uh, Al-Bazar, and a few other books of Hadith. And so they were all collected before, but he selected them. And so even up till this day, I might go and make a book of Hadith, but I will select books from the well-known books of Hadith based on whatever criterion I choose. But of course, they were already collected before me, so I have to attribute them to the source because I didn't get them from an isnad, I got them from a particular author. And so that's what Imam Nawi does. He says this hadith is found in Bukhari or Muslim or Tirmidhi or whichever source that hadith is from. I have a question about Bukhari. Um, we, have, uh, underst we understand that Bukhari was very critical in uh, collecting his hadith. But how can I make sure that what I have, is the, the book I have right now, is the book which was written by Bukhari? Well, that's wonderful. Actually, all those books, uh, Imam Bukhari, in fact, he made more than one edition of that book. But in his lifetime, uh, he dictated that book to many, many, many different students, and many, many copies were made, and it was spread all over the world while he was still alive. Same with Muatta of Imam Malik. And so the famous books like the Musnah of Imam Ahmed, they, uh, they exist in form of, uh, of the uh, manuscripts. Some of them go all the way back to the author. Most of them don't, but they go back very far away. And we compare those different manuscripts to make sure some people put a mistake in one or another. Or sometimes, like Imam Bukhari, all the hadiths are the same, but sometimes he changed the chapter headings of those hadiths. And so we, today, if you want to produce an edition, you have to get all the manuscripts together. Sometimes you will have those on uh, microfilm or you will have them in person from the different Islamic libraries and libraries in other countries that have collected these manuscripts. So we have tens of thousands of manuscripts, complete and incomplete, of all of those hadiths. Uh, and each one of them is, also has a chain from when it was written to the author. And those also, so it's very easy to authenticate them. But it's impossible for somebody to have forged them because they were famous books in the lifetime of their author. They weren't something that weren't known at that time. That's all we're going to have time for today, inshallah, brothers. Inshallah, this has been enlightening and beneficial to all of us. May Allah Almighty bless you and guide you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. the last and final prophet of Allah. He was a mercy unto the universe. Peace and blessings be on Al Mustafa. So he began this perfect man. 
sending his word across the land, leading only by his son. In the Quran, the word of Allah, he brought the answer to this cruel world. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad